Ang karahasan laban sa mga bata at kababaihan ay isa pa rin sa mga pangunahing krimen dito sa ating bansa. Bilang pagpapatuloy ng ating paggunita ng Women's Month, pag-usapan natin ang Republic Act 9262 or an Act Defining Violence Against Women and Children. Ano-ano nga ba ang mga panuntunin ng batas na ito at paano tayo nito matutulungan? Magandang araw, Laguna. Ako po si Luis. Sama-sama nating pagsaluhan ang magagandang kwento, masasayang karanasan at makabuluhang usapan. Lahat ng yan dito sa Laguna. At nagbabalik po ang dito sa Laguna. Kasama nga natin si Attorney Eric Paul D. Peralta, ang director ng UPLB Gender Center, na makakakwentuhan natin tungkol sa Violence Against Women and Their Children or VAWC. Magandang umaga po, Attorney Peralta. Uh, simulan po natin, Attorney. Okay. Ano po ba ang VAWC or Violence Against Women and Their Children? Okay, first, Violence Against Women uh, is a form of gender-based violence, meaning that it is ki- it's a kind of violence Uh, that happens by reason that a person is a woman. You know? The concept of uh, and their children is included there is because uh, violence against women and their children focuses on domestic relationships. It covers marital relationships, uh, former marital relationships, existing marital relationships, wherein most of the time uh, children are involved. You know? That's why uh, the, the violence against women expanded to cover uh, children which uh, should also be considered when we talk about domestic violences. Uh, attorney, ano po ang halimbawa ng mga vows? Okay. The, as of now, there are four examples. Now, first is, is about uh, physical violence, second is psychological violence, third is sexual violence, and the last will be economic violence. Okay. Sa apat po na inyong nabanggit, mm-hmm. Attorney, ano po ang kadalasang nararanasan ng mga kababaihan dito sa Laguna at sa kalakhan ng bansa? All right, in the five years that I am practicing here in La, in uh, Los Baños, no, particularly in Los Baños, the common uh, kind of abuses are uh, two. The first is about marital infidelity leading to psychological violence, and next is economic abuse. Ito yung hindi pagsuporta ng tatay sa kanyang anak. So those are the common uh, common kinds of abuses that I see no, when uh, during, in my uh, uh, law practice. So yun yung pinaka-common niya. Uh, those that are not common are physical abuses. No? I, I seldom see a physically battered woman go to my office and, uh, and uh, file a complaint. Perhaps they proceed directly to the uh, police no? or perhaps to, the, to a hospital because of their injuries. No? But the common cases of uh, VAWC that I see and I handle is really about marital infidelity leading to psychological violence and again, uh, lack of financial support uh, leading to economic abuse. And those two... Uh, or uh, kinds of bausi. Tony, sa mga nakaraang taon po, hmm. gaano po kadalas na nakakakita tayo ng cases ng bausi? Ah, well, I don't have really a uh, uh, reliable data about that, but from, my, from what I'm hearing, no, this is the uh, second most uh, prevalent case in regional trial courts aside from drug cases. So basically, uh, uh, it places a second no, to the most number of uh, Uh, criminal cases filed before regional trial court. So basically, marami siya. What's alarming about this is that, of course, we're talking about recorded cases. Now, most of these uh, domestic ki- kinds of domestic abuse are unrecorded. Uh, so, uh, of course, because of our culture, sometimes women uh, tend to not file a case no, because uh, uh, our culture will uh, view her you know, uh, or will, will, will uh, look at her with disfavor. You know? And uh, sometimes women tend to just keep it to themselves, no, uh, to save the family. No, there are a lot of factors uh, to consider uh, as reasons why no? women uh, do not file these kinds of cases. Uh, attorney, hmm. sa inyo pong karanasan, ano po ang nakikita ninyong epekto ng vowsi sa mga kababaihan at sa kanilang mga anak? Well, of course, no. Aside from the uh, apparent effects of physical abuse, it can cause uh, injuries, no mutilation, uh, contusions, and even death, no? And of course, uh, psychological abuse, it causes a, uh, a huge effect on the psychological makeup of the woman. The uh, sexual abuse you know, can cause uh, violations of the uh, 
a woman per, uh, as to her dignity you know, because in sexual violence it covers a rape in economic abuse the effects will be uh, the full dependence of the woman to the man you know, because in that uh, aside from the other kind of economic abuse that uh, the father does not support the child uh, one act of economic abuse is to deprive you know, the woman of the resources for example if there is a property belonging to both spouses and then one spouse will prevent the other spouse in the use, possession, and even uh, in the enjoyment of that property, that constitutes already economic abuse. Basically, if you are married to someone and you acquired, for example, a uh, motor vehicle or a tricycle for that matter, and then uh, your husband will not allow you to use that, you know, of course, the effect will, that will be that you are deprived already of your of your uh, communal property because you own, you own both of you own that. Eh? And uh, with that, you tend to uh, be abused because you're, you're, you, are not, uh, be, you are not able to use a property that you own. No? Aside from that, another kind is that sole uh, control by the husband of the financial resources. So the effect to, of that to the woman is that uh, she will be totally dependent no? over the man, no? making uh, her uh, somehow uh, psychologically, also psychologically affected. At sa kanilang mga anak naman, uh, same, no? the same abuses can happen no, to the children. Physical, psychological, sexual, and uh, economic. No? Uh, ito ay may epekto rin sa kanilang, bukod sa kanilang paglaki, no? uh, sila kagad ay, uh, sa, sa, sa bilang pag, pagkakaroon ng uh, murang isipan at murang edad, sila kagad ay nakasaksi ng nitong pang-abuso. So bukod sa physical, sexual, pati yung kanilang uh, psikolohikal na aspeto ay uh, siya rin uh, tiyatamaan na merong, meron kang nakikitang epekto sa kanyang pagtanda. Sige po, attorney. Pansamantala po natin putulin ang ating kwentuhan sa ating pagbabalik. Pagtutuunan natin ang legal na aspeto ng VAWSI at kung ano ang pwedeng gawin ng mga kababaihan at ng kanilang mga anak sakaling sila ay makaranas nito. Huwag kayong aalis, magbabalik pa ang Dito sa Laguna. Ang sumit sil ay bang mang mang, ang sumit pol ay bang hung hang, ang babae sa lansangan, huwag iritan kundi igalang. Pare, ang catcalling ay isang uri ng sexual harassment. Di biro ang sexual harassment at di nakakamacho ang pang-aabuso. Huwag iritan kundi igalang. Isang paalala mula sa Philippine Commission on Women at ng himpilang ito. At nagbabalik ang dito sa Laguna. Kasama pa rin natin si Attorney Peralta, ang Director ng UPLB Gender Center. At patuloy po ang ating kwentuhan tungkol sa Violence Against Women and Their Children or VAWC. Attorney, magpo-focus po tayo sa legal na aspeto. Meron po bang batas na naglalayong magprotekta sa mga kababaihan at sa kanilang mga anak sakaling sila ay makaranas ng VAWC? Meron, may, uh, meron specific law dyan, yung Republic Act 9262 or tinatawag natin Anti-Violence Against Women and Children Act. No? This was enacted uh, way back 2004. Uh, what's, what's good about this is that it is a criminal statute, meaning that for every violation, the penalty will be imprisonment. Attorney, ano po ba ang mahahalagang puntos ng Republic Act 9262? Okay, first, uh, it is a criminal statute, so there is teeth no, on this law because the perpetrator might have to... Uh, second thoughts in uh, violating the law because the penalty will be imprisonment. So being a criminal statute per se you know, makes it uh, a uh, very uh, important uh, or a very good law. Pangalawa, uh, it's a public crime, meaning that it's not required that the offended party shall only be the one to file the case. You know? uh, sabi dyan, uh, anyone who has personal knowledge about a certain kind of, uh, of violence that I mentioned a while ago can file a case in behalf of the offended party. You know? So the, 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 the idea that the victim or the woman who has been abused will not be 
able to file the case because of certain cultural issues no is already addressed because someone who has personal knowledge can file a case in her behalf third is the concept of protection orders no yung protection orders kasi parang blatter yan so ang ginagawa namin diyan mag-file ka ng bossy case i apply mo agad ang protection order so ibig sabihin uh, in the protection order the perpetrator you no know, uh, is not allowed to approach you or communicate with you in any manner another the, another good the good thing about it is that ina-address din ito yung issue na kapag halimbawa ihabol ko yung asawa ko baka pag uwi ko sa bahay babalikan ako may protection order diyan ibig sabihin hindi kang babalikan kasi temporarily you will be separated from your spouse no i think that's a good that's a good uh, that's a good uh, inclusion in that law no so yon the fourth uh, uh, good point about this law is that even the protection order can be applied for not exclusively by the offended party it can be applied for by anyone also who has personal knowledge of the incident so ibig sabihin yung pag file ng case mo pwedeng hindi ikaw yung offended party no pati yung pag-apply mo ng protection order pwedeng hindi ikaw din yung offended party so kumbaga yung again yung cultural issues natin sa Pilipinas na address na na o pwede pa lang file pwede pa lang mag-apply ng protection order kahit hindi ako yung naabuso pwede pwedeng ma-record na yung ganyan mga cases no? yung nakagandahan niya last no last a uh, good point about this law is that the protection order shall be filed no in the barangay where the private complainant resides this is actually contrary to sa practice in criminal proceedings wherein where the incident happened that's the place where you will find the case no dito mag-file ka ng protection order do sa lugar ko sa nakatira yung biktima why so that enforcement will be uh, very easy and will be very uh, dito effective kasi doon mismo ko sa nakatira yung biktima doon siya ipa-file eh no kumpara mo kasi alam ba may criminal dito kung sa nasaksak doon ang filing ng case ganoon yun eh kung sa nabangga doon pero dito diyan man mangyari yung vouchy sa lugar na yan diyan ipa-file ang vouchy pero protection order dito pa file kung sa nakatira yung complainant i think those five points will uh, encourage no now the victim who is abused to file cases kasi it's the only way to to address these issues no about the uh, violence against women and children. Bukod diyan, uh, merong nakasaad sa batas na tinatawag natin Interagency mm-hmm. uh, Violence Against Women Council. Uh, this council consists of several or uh, the departments that we have in the government uh, like this WD, DOJ, DOH, where in uh, representatives from the office uh, will be in charge in monitoring the implementation of the law. So aside from the very uh, brilliant provisions therein, there is this council is mandated to uh, monitor, no, oversee whether this law or the provisions of the law are being complied with or not. Okay. Linawin po natin, attorney, pagkakakulong po ang karampatang parusa sa sino man na mapatunayang lumabag sa Republic Act 9262. Tama po ba? Tama. Actually, in Section 5 of that law, uh, it consists of uh, Section 5A to Section 5I, all violations of those uh, categories will result to imprisonment. I believe the highest will be on Section 5I, which penalizes uh, imprisonment of six years and one day to like 12 years. 12 if I'm years. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yun po ang maximum at all. Maximum doon. That's, okay. really, ano, that's really a big uh, penalty. Why? Because it's not, uh, it's already uh, uh, an offense covered by regional trial courts. No? Okay. Para po sa ating mga manonood, gusto po nating malaman kung ang isang babae po at ang kanyang mga anak ay nakararanas ng vowsy. Ano po ang maaari nilang gawin? Okay. Uh, I will advise that the first thing to do will be to report it. No? Yung talagang asa sa mga paraan para mapigilan natin yung paglaganap ng ganyan. No? I-report mo yan. No? You should not hesitate no, to report it because of course the law the provisions of the law are there to protect you. No? Because Bausi really caters no? uh, abused women and children. So, mag-report ka. Saan ka mag-report? No? You can report it no? uh, before the barangay, no? okay. before the police. No? It can, in, t- in cases of emergency, before your respective rep- rural, he- rural health unit, no? your uh, nearest hospital, okay? the uh, nearest, nearest uh, office of the uh, provincial city prosecutor, the PAO, no? even lawyers, no? you can report these kinds of cases. 
so that no uh, through reporting you already performed the first step towards uh, addressing this uh, grave issue no kasi kung wala kang gagawin diyan uh, yan ay uulit at uulit no you know in uh, violence against women and gender based violence there's this what you call a cycle no? a cycle so, of violence where in uh, uh, uh ulit ulit na it, po it happens uh, uh, all uh, in a circle no uh, the, 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 uh, the perpetrator will abuse you and then after that the perpetrator will say sorry and then you will forgive the perpetrator and again it will recur and recur for a long time no? sometimes women and their children are caught in the cycle that they are not able to get out of there you know and this is why one of the reasons why this law was uh, enacted to to address these kinds of things yes Isalamang pong ulit paglilinaw, attorney. Sino po ang maaaring mag-file ng kaso or lumapit sa kinauukulan? Okay, I mentioned a while ago that Bawas is a public crime. So anyone who has personal knowledge can file in behalf of the victim. The victim, however, should be no, a woman who is in a relationship. The relationships uh, that are being uh, uh, stated in the law is a marital relationship, sexual dating, it can cover present and past relationships. So present marital, present uh, dating, present sexual, or past uh, marital, past sexual, past dating. It can't cover future relationships. No? Also, when you are a child, no, it doesn't mean that if you are abused, you can already uh, seek the redress of this law. Uh, for a child to be able to file a case for vowsy, the child must be a common child or child of the parents. No? A child of the mother or the child under the care of the mother. If the child or the mother will not fall under these categories, then there can be other crimes. But for uh, Republic Act 9262, now only those categories mm -hmm. that I mentioned uh, can the mother and the children, if they fall in those categories, they can file a case for vowsy. So, ulitin lang po natin, mm. kailangan po attorney ay kasal, sexual, at dating po. Okay, and there's a timeline. Past and present. Past and present. Uh, so, so can, covered po ang parehas na nakaraan at ang... Present. Hindi lang yung future. Okay. Yeah. Talaga nga naman pong punong-punong po ang ating discussion with Attorney Peralta ngayong umaga. Pero marami pa po tayong pag-uusapan. Huwag po kayong aalis dahil babalik pa po ang Dito sa Laguna. Boto ko para sa libre at nakalidad na edukasyon. Para sa maunlad na kapusayan. Para sa payapang kulidad. Para sa abogayang gamot. Para sa aking pamilya. Boboto ako. Boboto ako. Boboto ako. Boboto ako para ipaglaban ng bayang ko. At nagbabalik ang dito sa Laguna. Attorney, ano po ang ginagawa ng mga lokal na pamahalaan at ng mga opisina na katulad ng UPLB Gender Center upang labanan ang VAUSI? Okay. Aside from the uh, from implementing the mandated uh, provisions imposed upon them, for example, in the barangay, uh, there should be uh, a VAU desk. No? The VAU desk uh, functions... Uh, to receive the complaint, you know, uh, if, the, if the complaint is filed mm -hmm. with the barangay, at the same time to spearhead the awareness no, of uh, gender concerns. Uh, in the LGU, of course, uh, in the uh, municipal level or city level, uh, there uh, plays a part, the, the, the MHO plays a part, no, the municipal health office, or uh, wherein uh, uh, if emergency cases, you know, or rural health units, if, the, if there are emergency cases, the uh, mm -hmm. victim can easily uh, go to the respective unit and have their self check. No? Of course, we're talking about rape cases here. No? We're talking about okay. uh, sexual violation or abuses. That's why it's very important also for a health unit or personnel to uh, administer no? the injuries no? that are uh, suffered by the 
uh, victim. Aside from all those things, uh, I think the gender offices of the respective uh, LGUs play an important role in, in uh, improving the awareness no, of the constituents, particularly about gender issues and concerns. I think one reason, one uh, way to avoid or eliminate this kind of thing, thing is uh, for people to be aware no, of the women, women's rights, no, rights of all people, no, and for the empowerment of everyone. We in the UPLB Gender Center, uh, aside from our mandate here in the university, uh, is reaching no, uh, towards the nearby communities in spreading uh, uh, information and educational campaign no, about uh, violence against women and children. No. Aside from that, no, uh, another thing that we're focusing is about sexual abuses or sexual harassment. No. We uh, reach no, mm -hmm. towards the communities no, uh, to let them know that these kinds of things are wrong no, and should be eradicated, no, not only within the university, but even within these communities. Also, we have had experiences in the UPLB Gender Center wherein uh, women are approaching us you know, because they were abused. And these women are not constituents of the university. So basically, we have no jurisdiction over them. No? But what we do is that we lead the coordination towards the needed or necessary agencies. For example, if the woman needs uh, immediate health attention, we have a lot of Kung kailangan ka agad ng uh, enforcement, we have a lot of police. So, yun yung isa sa mga ginagawa namin para makapagserbisyo sa ating nearby communities. No? Kasi, of course, UPLB General Center is only a mandate within its constituents. But sometimes, no, nakikita nila yung center na takbuhan din kapag may nangyari pang abuso sa kanila. Attorney, sa mga tao po na may nais idulog or itanong sa inyo, paano po nila kayo maaaring i-contact? Okay, uh, they can reach me through the UPLB Gender Center. Uh, the number is 501-1844. Or uh, through email, uh, just type uh, uplbgendercenter at gmail.com. No? Uh, kung sa office ko naman, uh, they could contact me through uh, my landline there, uh, 5424780, or through my email, no? adtyericperalta.gmail.com. Maraming salamat po, Attorney Eric Peralta, ang director po ng UPLB Gender Center para po sa makabuluhang diskusyon tungkol sa violence against women and their children or VAWC. Bago po tayo magtapos, may karagdagang impormasyon lamang po sa darating na aktividad ng UPLB Gender Center. Sa lunes po, ika-25 ng Marso, alas 2 ng hapon, sa Drilon Hall ng Sirka ay magaganap po ang Titas of Pakikibaka, isang forum tungkol sa kababaihang manggagawa. Ito po ay isang aktividad kasama ang All UP Academic Employees Union ng UPLB at ng UP Open University. Lahat po tayo ay inaanyayahang pumunta. At dito na po nagtatapos ang isa na namang episode ng Dito sa Laguna. Para sa inyong mga suggestion at reaksyon, maaari po kayong tumawag sa numerong 536-2433 or di naman kaya 536-2511, local 312. I-like din po ang official page ng Dito sa Laguna, facebook.com slash dito sa Laguna. Muli ako po si Luis. Samahan niyo kaming muli sa susunod na episode ng Dito sa Laguna. Dito sa Laguna, tayo ay sama-sama. Matuto sa ating kwento, magulay na